got some prizes to give away later. So if you'll fill this out. And also there's food, coffee, coffee. We're going to start in about three minutes. Did you fill out one? Yes, I did. Thank you.
I wanted to tell you, I'm a great storyteller, so I want to tell you a story about um, why I'm so passionate about being an insurance agent and being an insurance agent with Farmers Insurance. So, uh, 1984, I moved to uh, Colorado Springs, and I got married, and I had a new little car, and we were, I was so excited to go to a show at Red Rocks. So Red Rocks is an amphitheater up by Denver. It's beautiful. It's kind of like the place where if you love music, that's the place you want to go see a show. And so I'm driving in my car on a Friday night to go to this show in Red Rocks. And as I'm driving along, a man, a person, I don't know if it was a man, I couldn't, I couldn't tell. A person hit me, and he was a drunk driver, and he pushed me into the oncoming traffic on I-25. This crash was, a, it was one of those kind of crashes where you think I'm going to die, and it was the, the car exploded, and the hood hit the windshield, and my wife was screaming, and it was one of those events, you know, it's just crazy, I can't believe you lived through this car crash. And they took us in the ambulance back to Penrose on Cascade, and they admitted us to the hospital, and, uh, and, I, and I called my farmer's agent, I had a farmer's agent at that time, I was an agent, of course, at that time, I was a customer, and I called him out of bed about 3 in the morning, on Saturday morning, I said, I've been in this terrific car crash. I don't know where my car is. I'm at Penrose Hospital. What do I do? And uh, Dave said, well, you're with Farmers. You'll be OK. You know? I didn't really believe him, because I've never really experienced anything like that before. I never had an insurance claim. I mean, I kind of believed him, but it's like you have doubts. So the next morning, uh, in the hospital, we're there. And Frank shows up at 10.30 that next day on Saturday uh, morning. And he introduces himself to us as Frank, our adjuster, and he would take care of everything. And I was like, well, that's pretty impressive that Dave got the call at 3 in the morning. And then my adjuster's there at 10 that next day at the Penos Hospital, me, my wife, and I. And uh, so I asked him about, you know, I've got my car. I don't know where my car is. My wallet's there. Her purse is in the car. Uh, you know, I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned about who's going to pay all these bills, this you know, ambulances and, and uh, doctor bills and hospital bills. And he says, I'll take care of everything. Um, so. They, met, they let us out of the hospital about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And, and so 5 o'clock, 5, 5.30, uh, that Saturday night, Frank shows up in my house with a bag full of all of our things out of the car. He brought my, pur my the purse and the wallet, everything. The Because our car was totaled. The car was, was no longer to be driven again. So he brought everything to our house. And I thought, that is pretty impressive. It's Saturday, OK? It's 5.30, and this man brings me everything out of my car so I can feel more comfortable about the situation I'm involved in. So long story short, um, I was so impressed with how Farmers as a company took care of my wife in that tragic event. Nine, nine months later, I became an agent with Farmers. And that was, that was April, I started April 15th, kind of tax day, of, uh, of 85. So I'm going to be an agent with Farmers for 30 years. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> no. <laughs> and I've never been, my whole family's never been away from Farmers. My, my, I was born a Farmers client. And my agent when I grew up was named Vern. And Vern was kind of a funny little guy. And we'd go pay cash every six months for our insurance. And, and he, was, he was our family agent. And I really believe that my relationship with Vern and then that car crash and those things have made me a much better agent. And I'm passionate about what I do because I experienced myself um, what can happen. And the great experience I had with farmers as an agent and a customer. So I'm really grateful to see her and visit with you. Uh, talk about the insurance. Insurance is such an important thing. You know, in a home, Catches fire in the Waldo Canyon fire, the Black Forest fire. You know, the customer doesn't think, oh, could I save 15% on my insurance? They're thinking, am I covered? Do I have the proper coverage? When, will I, when can I talk to my adjuster? When can things start get, when can things get going? How, how are these things going to work out? And, and farmers and myself as an agent are there to, to be with you when these things happen. There's, we, when a claim occurs, that's when we get to shine and prove to you that we are the best. And we'll take care of you in any situation you can. So, so, so we changed the policy over from whoever you had on the 1st of um, January 15 to Farmers. And Farmers has a very well-written policy when it comes to association policies. They, it's, a, it's what they call an all-in policy. All-in means everything inside your place is covered, the carpeting, the, the uh, finishings. So even if you were to improve your finishings, like you put on wallpaper or you improve the, the tile or the carpet, Farmers is going to cover that if there's ever a claim. Okay? It's great. Great coverage, great policy, okay? So, I could bore you with all the details about this thing, about the insurance policy. Most of my clients, uh, their questions are about their own policy. My HOs, we call, I'm sorry, there's like, there's like this insurance jargon you get to hear. It's like when you go to a bank or your CPA, you're like, I don't know what that is. And HO6 is a policy you have 
that covers your belongings and your liability in your home. And it, and it dovetails with the association policy so that we try to make it so there's no gap. So that when you, the association policy is like the big mothership, and your policy, the HL6 or the condo owners association policy, or your condo owners policy, dovetails together. And with those two policies, anything happens in your units, your, your places, your homes, uh, there should be coverage one way or the other, okay? So, I want to tell you about me a little bit, my office. So, I, like I said, I've been in Asia for 30 years. I have an office on Dublin and Academy. So, there's kind of like Woodman and York and then Dublin, if you're going south. And I've been there almost 30 years in that same location. It's just kind of behind, there's like a, there's a fire station, there's a Chinese restaurant, and there's the... Um, Walgreens? No, the Oak, not no. just Oak Place, sir. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the spa place. Yeah. And across the street is the uh, is uh, Sprouts on the other side of Dublin. So on the other side of or on the other side of Sprouts. So if you're on Sprouts, you drive across the Academy on that side of Academy, that's right. So it's the northeast corner of Dublin. So Denise has been with me for uh, five years, and Jan's been with me for 15 years, and we have Jennifer, and she's been about two years. Her husband's in the military, and she's a super um, sweet gal. My wife's been with me my whole, maybe <laughs> when we got married, she came, she came along for the ride to get insurance. She's actually the true boss of the office, but, so my wife's been with the office for 30 years, like me, and uh, I, have, I have three kids. I have a son who's a Marine. I'm really proud of him. I've got a daughter who just graduated from college and is trying to get a job. She actually wants to work for farmers. She really doesn't want to work for farmers. She's in LA. She's in Los Angeles where her home office is, and we're trying to get her a job there. And my daughter is 15 and goes to her academy. She's right here at her academy high school. So, um, so what, how, how it works with, my, uh, with us. In my office, uh, we have a phone. And my number is on my business card. I think I sent you guys a flyer and all that stuff. If you need help, let's say it's Sunday night and a pipe breaks or something occurs, there's a fire, you need help, you call my office and my computer phone will, will direct your call to the claims office directly or to my cell phone or you can leave a message. So if you need to find a farmer's representative 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, you can just call my phone number on my, my card and it will speed dial you to the claims office or to the customer service department or to my cell phone, okay? So if anything occurs, just give us a call and we'll, we'll get, to, get to the answers you need or get the claim started or whatever, okay? In my, in being an agent, as long as I've been an agent, I have lots of vendors. I have glass people, I have carpet people, I have mitigators, I have handymen. You know, like the other day, well last year, just about the same time of year, there's some high winds and one of my clients had a tree fall into her home and it was late afternoon, and uh, we had four men come and help her because it was really actually exposed. She, her kitchen and her dining room were actually exposed because this tree is landing in her house. So we had, we had men moving the tree off the house, and we had people putting tarps up just to protect her property. And because I'm an insurance agent, I'm an agent, I could actually start working and representing you immediately, even though there's really not a gesture there yet. So I knew this was a problem. This woman had to get this tree off her house, and we just started working on it immediately. Okay? So... With that, you guys have 100 questions, so let's start. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? I will visit with you as long as you want to talk about insurance. Yes? I thought we'd been told on um, previous insurance, I'll let you, that we would contact the HOA and not the insurance agent. Well, that, you know, that is a great question. So sometimes you have situations, like we had a situation with the association that I insure, where a washing machine had um, overflowed. Overflowed? Is that a word? Overflew? <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. So, you know, the, the whole damage was less than $800 you know, for this washing machine that was damaged a unit in an association that I, I also cover. And so, you know, I, I, I got the call. I called the, uh, the contact, the, the, the association. It wasn't the president. It was another lady, a lady that we called. And I said, we can turn a claim in for this, but you may want to discuss it before we start turning a claim in for $800. You know, so I got the mitigator out. The mitigator was service master. Service master, service master went to the house got the water off the floor within 24 hours or maybe less than that time frame and there really was no mold or damage so we don't want to file claims just to file claims you know you don't want to file a $800 claim on your policy because you're going to get you're going to either get a rate increase or you're going to get fired by an insurance company so you've got to be very careful but you can always call me on my cell phone or you can call um you know even farmers claims they will be uh like that is directed back to me if that situation came up. That's what happened with the lady with the, the washing machine. She actually called Farmers, 800 number, and then they directed it back to me. I called the association member, person who's, a, who's my contact, 
and said, let's just take it, let's slow down a little bit on this, and let's think about it. Let's get a service master out there to look at it, and then we'll move forward if it needs to be, uh, you know, actual claim claim. And great, great question. That's a super, super good question. Because we've had, I had an association over by um, 8th Street, kind of. And they had seven claims in six years, okay? And so one, one claim was $300. No. And it just, they, their premiums went from like 12000 to 27000 like within a few, it was just crazy. And then I'm getting calls from the association, <laughs> what are you guys doing? You're, you're robbing us. Well, it, because you have these claims, it jeopardizes your good, good standing, your good premiums. Your good standing is keeping claims um, that reasonable. Yes? I want to know what part of the building does the association cover? Your farmers insurance. Well, it covers, uh, covers all the exterior. All the exterior. Yes. 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 Okay. And, so, the, and the interior. And the interior. So if the carpet was damaged or a wall was damaged, ceilings were damaged, we cover all of that. Yes. Does that cover the basement too? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No. So no. I'm not. I don't. I don't know you guys. I'm sorry. I just. I'm just getting to meet you. You, okay. you guys. So some of my associations. The, the when the unit was built. The structure was built. There was unfinished basements, you know. So a lot, a lot of times in, this, in these homes, they build a, a complex and they'll leave the basement lower level unfinished. So in that situation, the best thing you can do is if you if you've got a unit that you bought when you bought it or when it was made, when it was first built and it's an unfinished basement and you've taken fifty thousand dollars of your own money and finished the basement, you need that you need to add that interior finish to your HO, your condo owner's policy because the farmer's policy is going to cover it the way it was when it was built, in a way. Does that make sense? But how do I know what it was when it was built? Because I didn't know it then. There's a regional building. it was when I bought it. There's a regional building thing we can pull up. So you pull up the regional building, the department of Pikes Peak regional building, and if, and if it permits for poll, it'll show us on the, on the documents that this is when the basement was remodeled or finished. That's cool. Um, Mark, I yes. thought when we were doing this policy, we went through each individual house yep. and listed all the basement amounts. Yes. So I thought. Yeah, we four or five of you. The, I have four or five customers that live in your complex, and uh, and we've gotten opportunities to work with a few more people. What's the range? Well, it kind of depends on. There's that's kind of, it's a great question. There's um, you know, we can get a policy all the way down to about 150, 130 a month or a year. Excuse me, a year. Excuse me, uh, all the way up to 500 dollars. Depends on jewelry and. Guns. There's so many things. There's every it's single is an unbundled. And unbundled. It's just a standalone. It's, and it's, it's going to average about 180, 180, 180 to 200 dollars a year is the average premium. 180, 180, 200 dollars a year for each of us. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're always. I'm going to always include loss assessments. I'm always going to include uh, building coverage because I just, I just, as an agent, I'm not going to let you have a policy that doesn't have those two riders because they're so important with with HOS, with in association like you guys are. If we want, could we get a copy of our policy and get the compare price? Yes, yeah, yeah. It would be wonderful just to I would love it. That's really... Oh, good. And then the, good thing, the good thing about having kind of the farmers and farmers, you got, you got one adjuster. <coughs> you know, it's kind of like they're kind of having to decide themselves what we're going to be. Can I read a copy of what you said now? Oh, you, haven't, you didn't get a chance to see it? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Fine. Go ahead, Joe. Would you explain that loss assessment? Yeah, that's a crazy one, isn't it? So a loss assessment is, a, is, a, is an endorsement that you have on your HO6 or your condo owner policy. And what happens, and this is what's happening all over town now, is that is these, you guys have a very large deductible on wind and hail. So if wind and hail hits your complex, it's going to be almost a million dollar deductible for you guys to, to bear that bunt of the roof or to come out and replace your roofs. And you, if you guys haven't got a million dollars in your coffers, then you're, then you're going to have to pay the roofer out of your own funds or out of your own pockets, and so you're going to you're going to get an assessment of 100. You're 126 units, right? Yes. 126 of the assessment. So let's say there's a half million dollar assessment, or you're going to pay the roofer half million dollars out of your own money. They're going to take that 126 by 100 by 500 thousand dollars and give you a letter that says, uh, "Here's an assessment for you to pay," and you have to pay within a certain amount of time. And it's usually going to be it's going to be kind of coordinated by diversified too through your property manager. You're going to send that letter to your state farm agent, your USA agent, your American family agent, and if you have loss assessment on your policy, they will pay it to you, to you, to you, and then you pay it to the association to help fix the roof or replace the roof or whatever. Okay, but it's only going to be things that can be claimed. It can't be we need a new driveway because the driveway is worn out. It's going to have to be a claimable thing. It can't be we're doing an improvement. We're making new decks on the property. We're going to 
take the road out and put a new road in. Those, are, those, those assessments can happen, it's not going to be an insurance assessment because it's not an insurance claim that occurred to make an assessment. Does that make sense or is that too muddy? Okay. Do they, do all of the HO6 have a loss assessment? No, 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 you have to, you have to ask. Usually, usually I've never, I've, I've only seen a couple client, a couple companies you know, there's, there's a lots of insurance companies out there. See, two companies that don't include it at all. You have to ask for it as a, as a consumer, as a buyer. Most companies include $1,000 automatically. And I recommend at least $10,000. And $10,000 with farmers is like $7 more a year on your policy. So, I mean, I'd even do $25 or $12 more. I mean, you can get $25,000 with loss assessment for $12 with us. Why wouldn't you? you know? But that's not State Farmer or American Family. I, don't, I have no idea what their premiums are. You know, you have to, you know, it's, everybody's got their own rating structure. If we totally remodeled or updated our unit and say something happened to it, mm -hmm. what sort of proof would I need to show farmers that we went from tile countertops to brand? I that, mean, as far as upgrades, yeah. be sure I'm covered for the extra. That's really, you know, all these questions, you guys are really good, so thank you. Um, you know, I had, when those fires occurred in Waldo Canyon and in Black Forest, I had 14 of my customers lose homes to the ground. I mean, literally, just, it was just scorchers. It was unbelievable. I've never seen like in my life. So I met with these adjusters, the farmers. And the adjusters, first thing out of their mouths is they met with my customers. We met at hotels or in family homes or wherever we met with them, our customers. Um, they would say their hellos and kind of do their formalities. And the first thing they'd say is, would you have pictures? Do you have something I can see in my eyes about what you're talking about? You know, because they would go around and they would ask about fixtures and they'd ask about cabins. I mean, it's, 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 <laughs> it's grueling to go through a loss like that because you've got so many details. So a picture's worth a thousand words. And so what the adjusters really want you to do is take a, like a corner picture, like you're saying in the corner of your room, and you take a picture like this, you know, take a picture of this, like all four corners, you know. So they really want to see the whole picture. They want to see, I didn't know, actually, as an agent, a client didn't know. They want to see the like ceiling fixtures, they want to see the floor, the carpets. They can see the kind of the whole room by doing this four corner thing. Then they want to kind of bring you in and take pictures of like more detailed pictures of the couch and the sofa and open. Another thing that people forget to do in this photo op, this photo thing, is you got to see the open. You got to open it. You got to open the guitar case. You got to open the toolbox. You got to open the drawers. We want. We don't want to see your personal stuff. We want to see the drawer. We want to see everything. Every Tupperware drawer. I mean everything. You know, every knife, fork, and spoon has to be identified to get get money for it. Uh, but a picture will show the adjuster whether it's my brand or another brand. You, knew you had two sets of, of serving, you know, whatever. So open your cupboards, open your drawers. It, I go through a house, I do this for my customers. I go through a house with my customer and do this inventory thing with them. 450 pictures is the average when I'm done. I want everything. I want every detail. Video. Video's okay, but just don't like video because I'm not, I'm not, you can use video, but the problem with video, it's, it's too time consuming. Adjusters can see a picture and go, Got it. They can zoom in on it. They can zoom in on the picture now with this new technology we have. They can see you know, the name brand. They can see the quality of the, the item. So they really, adjusters in all companies, whether it's my brand or another brand, they really want photos. And a, a good inventory, probably in your size of home, is going to be 250 to 400 pictures. Every, they want to see golf clubs. They want to see tools. They want to see, and it, it, it may take a couple hours, but imagine those people that lost their homes. They spent, they spent months. Months and months writing out detail after detail after detail what the adjuster wanted to know about. You know. There's companies that can do that for you that you can hire. Right? Yes. Are there any that you recommend? Do you do that, Chris? Okay. Uh, we had we had um, I had a guy that did that. Him and his wife. They just it was just it wasn't making money for them. They couldn't they couldn't charge the appropriate amount for the hours it spent. So, with, but with farmers, there's actually on our website, we have a little, um, and I think all companies have this, American Family, State Farm, USA, they have like a little inventory guide sheet. And actually, in my office, I have some CDs. CDs, you imagine a CD? <laughs> but they actually kind of give you a CD, and it's like a little thing, room by room. So a living room, so they kind of have an identifier to help you kind of do that for you. Does that make sense, kind of? There's like a spreadsheet, um, and that will help you. So if you, if you want one of those, I can send them, you can stop by the office, we have these little CDs we can give you. Oh, it is an inventory uh, helper sheet kind of thing. And so it's a download, you put in your CD drive, it loads up, and you just do room by room, kitchen, garage, you know, living room, and away you go. I think there are apps too. Yeah, there's some apps, just like Quicken, yeah, Quicken, I use Quicken, you know, I go Quicken for my books, and then Quicken has an app like that, it's easy, it's simple. Kind of walk you through yeah, yeah. The whole process. Oh,
So like, I think it's like, it's like, you remember that phrase, eating a whole elephant? Yeah. You know, doing this whole thing, inventory thing could be like an elephant. Just, you know, do a, do a hoof and then do a, do a trunk and then, you know. Uh, Mark, you might remind me that I, from personal experience with a friend, she did it, but she left it in the house. Holly buys you have to in the house. <laughs> house burns down, it's not going to help you anymore. Yeah. So another thing too, that's a great point. So a lot of my clients, I have, I have, a, I still keep a file cabinet in my office. I have everyone's files. So I, I will put a flash drive or a CD in those files for my customer. We, they have this, they just drop by, hey, can you put this flash drive in my folder for me? Of all my inventory. So, and, I'll, and I can say keep it, no one's gonna see it. Uh, I'm a little bit confused on something you said during your presentation about the deductible. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you mentioned something about a million dollar deductible. I didn't think ours was that high. In fact, I thought ours was about twenty-five thousand. We're deductible for so it, there's two different deductibles in your policy. There's a deductible for any kind of claim other than wind and hail, because wind and hail is a big deal in Colorado Springs. I mean, Colorado is the second or top state in the nation for wind and hail claims, and Colorado Springs is one of the top cities next to. So Denver. that was specific to that. Yes. Yeah. Claim. So yeah. So if you have a pipe break or a fire. You know, uh, frozen pipe, fire, vandalisms, those are all going to be $5,000 deductible for the association. And the association, when the hail deductible is 2%. Is that, is that, I'm sorry, I hope I'm clear. No, that's fine. Okay. And then in all the associations that, you know, whether you're with, whether you're with travelers, you're with Allied, you're with Philadelphia, whether you're with you American Family, we're all, all of us insurance companies are making you guys as consumers go to this high deductible on wind and hail. So, what I'm hearing you say then, if our is the deductible on ours five thousand or yeah five thousand for yeah. everything is that's what that's what we should get in our H O six is a five thousand dollar loss assessment. Well, you, but your deductible for wind and hail is a million dollars. Okay, but so how much should we put that? You need to have ten thousand. If you take if you take a million dollars, divide it by by two hundred twenty six units. You guys, so yeah, it should be a, it could be a light to come on. Yeah. I have, I'm a little confused. It is very confusing. It is. Yeah, well, confusing. as far as the interior goes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. can you explain that again? Okay, so farmers, our policy you have with us, we just started with us, is what they call a walls in, all inclusive policy. Okay, so when you, if you had your home burn or something tragic happened, Farmers are going to pay a contractor to rebuild the structure just like it is. Just, just, just ten Cabinets and cabinets everything. Cabinets and yeah. Fixtures, everything. But what if it isn't that bad? What if it's water damage? Mm -hmm. Well, there's going to be, okay, there's a, The floors, the walls. So there's, so there's a 5,000 deductible. What is it? 5,000 deductible. So it has, to, it has to exceed that much to be covered under the policy. So that's why a lot of times you want to get, like, maybe a mitigator. A mitigator is a person that comes out and will, will like, Bring, bring machines to clean the, the water up. Right. The water is really, the, well, in Colorado Springs, there's like three kind of claims. There's going to be wind and hail and the water. I mean, water seems to be our second most frequent event. Um, all different sources it can be a broken pipe to a washing machine to, to a sprinkler, you know, spigot, spigot thing that freezes and you turn the water. Why is the water not watering my lawn? It's watering my basement. You know, that kind of thing. Um, so. Um, but to have it be 5,000, mm -hmm. it must be a very. Bad. Well, if, it's, if, if the thing with water, with water, the water kind of claims, the sooner you can get to it, the sooner you can get that water, and it's still clean water, uh, there's, it's, it can be mitigated, mitigated very quickly. If you can get a service master, service pro, one of those, you know, one of these guys that come out with their trucks and they have a men come out and they can get that water off of whatever surface it is, you usually can save, even wood floors, they can save them if they can get there within, if within 24 hours or 36 hours. Anything past 36 hours or 48 hours, 48 hours, it starts to get into some problems where it starts ruining uh, drywall and wood floors and paneling. And then you start moving from a three or four thousand dollar claim to a twenty-five, thirty thousand dollar claim sometimes. Okay, so you're saying that that our homeowners is uh, is responsible for that, yeah. or we? What's well, bad again? Yeah, but that's great. I mean, every, here's the deal. That I'm sorry. Great, great question. It depends on the event. Okay, so this woman with the washing machine back. I was talking about. It really was her washing machine, okay? It was really her kind of her mistake. So her HL6 was really kind of her condo owner's policy's primary, and the association would have been secondary because she, her machine damaged it kind of. I mean, so she had to file a claim under her American family, whatever she had, 
where we really wanted to push her to. Because it was her machine that damaged us. Does that make sense? But if the wall breaks, if like, well, the thing in the wall breaks, and it's, it's, it's the association's wall, then we're going to cover it. I got it. Got it? Okay. Like I have people that, here's another thing that happens. It's kind of odd, but it happens. People will actually start running a tub, okay? They're going to get the tub, and they go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it happens almost every year with us. So someone runs a tub, and they think, I'm going to get in the, the tub. I'm going to go do a nice tub. And I think I gotta go shopping. And off they go, and the tub runs for hours, okay? And that, it, it's their fault. It's their fault because they let the tub run. One of the suggestions that was told to me was never run your dishwasher at night. Yeah. And never run a load of clothes and leave your home. Yeah, it's, that's... It's probably the most frequent claim we have that with water that's kind of like preventable but didn't know. Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> it's hard because you really, you're doing your, you're doing your laundry on Sunday or Saturday. You want to run to King Supers and get other little you know, things. And who wants to sit and watch the washing machine? Yeah, it's. And the dishwasher at night, which a lot of people do because mm -hmm. it's cheaper. Yeah. But you wake up to a house full of water. Daytime too, if you're going. True. Yeah. Especially if you have pets. So go ahead, please. So if a water pipe breaks mm -hmm. underneath your house. Yep. Well, that, define better what you're trying to describe. And so there's the, the, the other narrative, and it, you, you guys are good. Thank you for all those great questions. Once the water pipe leaves the building, but it's on the dirt. Well, it's under the. Under the foundation. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. It's all part of the policy. Which policy? Which policy? Part of the Farmers Association policy. The HOA. The HOA policy. But you mean like your pipe in your furnace room? No, underneath. No, it's underneath. You know, my garage door is out, and then I have a room that's on there, and it's that pipe that went underneath the house, the water pipe, to the faucet that was out there. Oh. Yeah. That was a long time ago. Yeah. It, just, it just came. <laughs> the good thing, too, is if you have both policies, and you're never really not going to be covered between one yeah. and the other, and that's why the HL6 policies are so important to have that secondary policy because it, it, it's not one or the other. And so you're always, you're not left exposed. So, so when you have to, so back to this whole thing when I started my conversation. So if you have a question, if you keep like, because everything's so individual. I've never had a claim in all the years I've had a, a client or an agent that can say, well, that was just like this claim. They're very, everyone's very unique in their whole situation, how it occurred, what happened. So please, I mean, just call them over. We'll figure it out. You know, just we'll discuss it. We'll, we'll figure out what to do next and who to call and and just get some eyes on the get some people on the look at it and figure it out. Because sometimes it, you just who knows. You know what I mean? Yeah, please. I want to go back to this basement situation because uh -huh. this has come up several times in board meetings and various. It's things. a very it's a very touchy. And when the, this new policy was presented at the board meeting, yep. the special meeting in December. It was told to us that the basements were now covered. Yes. We have, we, so, okay. So. Then you're saying, but the way it was originally, which I don't know what it was originally. Yeah. I think it was built out afterwards because my house is the same as next door and their lower level is different <coughs> than mine. Right. Everyone's unique. Yeah. So what does the policy say? Our policy covers 100 percent of how. So if you're so whatever if you're home today is how it is today, and it burns tomorrow, that's how we're going to rebuild it. That's how we're going to pay the money to rebuild it. The whole interior. Yeah, the whole interior. Basement then finishing. why were you bringing so, up how it was originally? So, so, so we added on when we met. We added, we added an endorsement on your policy. Is what they call it. You <coughs> actually are paying more for this endorsement farmer to have this coverage be all in and include everything that's happened. Okay. Oh. So you're paying more for that with us to have that endorsement, that coverage. So if we were to drop that endorsement, then you'd be. Then our lower yes. levels would not be covered Correct. except for the structure. Correct. Yes. And Pat, I don't know if this is where your confusion is coming from. When I checked the insurance policies, the one that you currently have, they the policy that you currently have did not have any of the basements in the, old in the entire community. The old one. The old one. Yes. Yeah. We kind of there were that. zero basements covered. We went house by house. I have the list, and it is my goal sometime this year when I get a chance. We've got about 10 houses that are showing where the basements are unfinished. I'm going to personally go to those 10 houses and verify that those basements still are unfinished. <coughs> but that, you know, that's what the property assessor's office shows. So there's only 10 houses, to be quite frank, that are even questionable as to whether or not 
base was finished or not finished. And I think it only have ten houses you have some that have just one level anyway. Correct. Mm -hmm. But the only factor that factors into that when we did that is to make sure we're getting the right premium to cover what your exposure is. It does not mean that if we said yours was unfinished and it's finished, that we're not going to give you what you had the day before the loss. It's a tool we use to make sure we come up with the right amount of coverage for you, but it does not dictate what you will get if there's a loss. If we say you have two bathrooms, you have three, or whatever the questions are that we use, you still will get the three, or you'll still get the finished basement. Well, the confusion came up because Mark was saying we were covered. So there's three kinds of HO policies. There's one that stops at the studs, and it's called and then you have to get an HO6 that studs in. And then there's another endorsement you can put on where they will cover your place the way it was built, but they won't cover any improvements. And then there's a 100% covered. You have the 100% covered with us, but not all policies are written out. You have the Cadillac plan. But there's three stages oh, okay. of an HOA policy. I don't care. 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 And Angela spent a couple hours in the office making sure that every detail was covered. I mean, literally, I think we were three hours together in the office working on it. So the other thing we're going to, I'm sorry, I'm just give me one more second. The other thing that we do, Denise and I, is we're, we're going to pen this thing for 10 months from the day it started, and we're going to call and say, okay, it's time to get some renewing. Let's get, let's get a hell of this thing before the renewal comes up and keep the premium at, at, at keep it in check. Because insurance companies in general, whether it's my brand or another brand, they're going to raise your premiums. So our job is, as an agency is to catch it and fix it and then, it, then renew it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Some, some agencies let it on autopilot. So let's just get it on autopilot. We're not autopilot agency. We're going to get a hold of you. And we're going to, and like, Denise had this lady come in the other day, right at the same time yours is renewing. And how much did we save the other association? Like um, $8,000 or something. Yeah. Yeah. Because these insurance companies have this automatic computer that goes, let's make it bigger, let's make it more. And our job is to push it back to what reality is. So go ahead, please. Either. Ladies first. Okay, when it goes to renew, uh -huh. okay, and if the association keeps you guys, uh -huh. we don't know, will you then send the information that my house is covered to my mortgage company? Yes, I've gotten about six of yours so far, and I actually have them in the folder. So I can, after we're done, you can, I can see if you're one of them. Right, um, because but, my mortgage company called or sent me a letter threatening that they said I didn't have insurance. Yeah, yeah so since we don't know who your mortgage is the first year round, right. we need to get what they call their clause and your loan number. And, and I gave I that to you guys. Yes, I will add it on and then I've been faxing it to them or I'll call their, whatever's on your letter, if you call me with your letter. I did. Yeah, and I called mm -hmm. them and got them mm -hmm. all put on and then I get it faxed over for you. Then next year, we will automatically send those out. But if you were to refinance or change mortgage companies during the year, you would always want to let us know so we're not sending the wrong company kind of right. yeah, that's about, That usually happens. Because you know, like American, American, Bank of America sold a huge block of mortgages just a few years, a few months ago. And now we're dealing with a whole other mortgage company. We didn't even know that the Bank of America had sold the block of mortgages off. And so now Bank of America no longer services those loans, but we didn't know that. So we're sending, we're sending, we're sending bills to the Bank of America and just going into a trash can somewhere. And so the new bank doesn't even know that it's, it's a bit. It's, so, so you as a consumer, you as the insurer, need to kind of help us right. to on top of all that. So yeah, if you get a letter from mortgage company, it's a smooth change from Bank of America to you know Desert, Desert Sands Mortgage Company of Arabia. Tell us so we can fix it. <laughs> See, I have a whole file of everyone yeah. I've gotten so far. Yeah, we have a big folder of your, all your stuff in there, and we have all the thing kind of archived. And we actually we actually do we scan everything too. So if you call. Even if Denise wasn't there, Jan could look at her, Jennifer, we have it all scanned so we can find it immediately if we if we were looking for something. So yes sir. I'd like to latch on to this uh, basement scenario uh -huh. one more time. <laughs> uh, I I appreciate the fact that they've gone through the necessary steps to make sure that if the person has a finished basement, it's covered by the policy. Uh -huh. And they've apparently gone to building department yep. to get this information. So, so, does what's that mean that what's any of us who bought our home uh, with an unfinished basement that was subsequently finished either in whole or in part mm -hmm. and drew a building permit that it would be on that list that they're talking Correct. about? Correct, yes. yes. But if we didn't draw a building permit, it would not be on that that's, list. Uh, that's, kind of the, that's part of the kind of edging. That's why I'm wanting yes. to clarify that. If yes. you didn't do a building permit, you didn't let us know 
and then we will add on just to make sure it will be additional premium, but we will put on your piece of property what's finished in that basin right. just as an extra cautionary measure to protect you. You're, you're still, as to be said, even if it burned down, whatever parts you finished in that basin is going to be covered. But the I guess the guess where I got my little confusion is if the adjuster can't, if our adjuster doesn't see permit pulled and the home doesn't exist, he's, he's not likely to believe the basement was finished. And he's like, really? Was it finished? You know, that's where the pictures come yeah. in, is that you've got to at some point show proof of loss because in the fires there's, there's nothing that's there at and there's nothing to, you know, partial loss since everything's kind of still there. But with fires it, or theft, you, you know, there's just nothing there. So that's why, as any homeowner, it's your best defense to take pictures of your TVs and your couches and your stuff. But, and, uh, but if you had a building permit, it at least indicates yes, that you've got yes. that correct. Yes. Yes. Well, and I went through each one of the property through taxes. I went through that. Then I pulled the permits on all those that showed that the basement was or was not finished, and we provided that to Angela. Yeah. So there were only a few that yeah. I could not prove that were finished without a permit. And so yeah, I think we had a very low percentage of very, unfinished for Almost versus Permits finished. were pulled on almost all of them. Yeah. And all this. So all that information was sent to farmers underwriting. So if I let's say something happens to me as an agent and I disappear, all that is incorporate. That all that information that you guys provided to us was sent to the underwriter, and the underwriter can, can see it all. And I have a question regarding I was at a meeting with the Board of Realtors today, and there's a complex in town that the only difference between them and ours is that we own our own private streets and we maintain our own streets. Mm -hmm. They have a sewer backup. Okay, sure. Um, and it really damaged a lot of houses. And now there's a huge fight as to whose responsibility yeah, yeah. is that. Yeah. Is it the HOA? Is it the homeowner? Is it the city? <coughs> there was a what would happen in our complex because of the fact that we own our street? Yeah, you, you're basically the whole the whole thing is yours, right? From fence yeah. line to fence line, yeah. It kind of depends on yeah. the specific yeah. of claim. Yeah. You're, you're actually, your actually association is better off specific. than Walsh because, you, like you said, it's, when it gets started, to get who owns what part of what and, right. yeah. But you do have certain, we have that endorsement on your policy. Okay. So it is on your policy. We can't ever, it's hard for us to say yes, something's covered because it hasn't happened yet. And claims are very specific to who, what, where, why, you know, what happened first, what happened second, why did it happen, the cause well, I of think it. everybody just got something in the mail regarding there's an insurance company out there that insures for sewer backups. Yeah. And, you know, I had a lot of people call me and ask if that's something that needed, and I don't think it is because well, it's hard for the city too because then you've got any time you've got. Yeah, actually, we did. Funny you brought that up. We had a, um, you know, there's an agent with farmers. There's, there's like, um, no, I can't. Describe. They're like private investigators. That's not the right word. There's people that like look at all that stuff in, in our in our corporation. And they sent out an email to me. Just that's funny you brought it up. They sent out an email to me about maybe ten days ago. So that policy is bogus. They don't they advise your clients not to buy it. So it's a waste of money. It's a waste of paper. That's interesting you brought it up. But you do have the endorsement on your HIA. Yeah. I asked this question in the previous insurer, and I will ask it of you also. Okay. Are we covered for torna tornadoes? That's not my real question, but okay. are we covered for tornadoes? You're covered yeah, for Yeah, absolutely, yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, there's, no, so, there's no earth movement. So if the earth, the earth the Yeah, I don't have a lot of me ask my question. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. If a tornado came through uh -huh. Cypress Ridge yeah. and tore every house apart, yes. like you see on TV, happens, not far from here. Do we have enough coverage to rebuild every house? Yes. How so? Well, 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 wait, well, it doesn't work out to me because there's been a lot of improvements done around here. And is do we really have enough to to cover every you're, single you're house right now. You're right the way now. it was? You're in, let me just get my paperwork here. I don't have it memorized, sorry. Yes, we go by about So you have 50 million. So the whole cost of the whole conference is 50 million five hundred and fifty thousand dollars eight hundred and ninety six this is how like this is how this is how detailed they got. Most associations insure round numbers. They go to like hundreds or hundred thousands. So you guys got to you got down to the five dollar range, okay? <laughs> Which is really good because you guys spent the time doing that. Let me do the math real quick. So I don't have it by my brain. We did what we did more than your last policy. Yeah. 
So each each of your structures is insured for four hundred and four hundred and two thousand dollars basically. How much? Four hundred and two. Four hundred and two. That's not land or or the area of the town. No, the sidewalks and streets. Well, and you know, even though they're different sizes, so you you can't. Yeah, it's a blank. It's a blanket policy. We don't we don't insure your. Uh, and yeah, that's the, we're not insuring your structure. We're insuring the whole complex, every building, every sidewalk, everything. And then we have, and then, and then we talked about that endorsement you put on that here, team endorsement. So the other endorsement we put on there, Denise did, is another six point three million for the improvements. So you have another six point three million for improvements you've done to your units. So when, Ange, when Angela and Denise sat down in the basements, we took the five, we took the half of the five, uh, sorry, fifty million dollars and added six hundred six million to that for the improvements. So that endorsement you're paying for, that extra endorsement for the $6 million of improvements is your basements and upgrades. Okay, so the, so the basic policy is $50 million for just the complex, $50 million, $500,000. Then we've added this endorsement you're paying for, which is the Cadillac plan, and we add you another $6,300,000 $6, for that. So really you're insured for nearly $60 million. $60 million. Hey, keep in mind that they're different size houses. You have two hundred thirty thousand dollar home in there. Well, obviously, they're not going to get four hundred six thousand. They're going to get two hundred thirty to replace that one. And then if you've got a four hundred fifty one over here, it's it's by it it your. Yeah, we we not we're not insuring units. We're not insuring we're going to insure the whole complex. Our addresses like I said, oh, we can't give you any more money for that unit because we have fifty million dollars to replace your one house if it burns down.